We're here for the rededication of the Shushan Terminal, as it was originally called, at New Orleans Lakefront Airport. This is a reconstruction and renovation of an Art Deco building that was first dedicated in the 1930s. When Katrina came through in 05, it, des it destroyed and it destroyed almost all of the artifacts in this building and the architecture as well. It required basically gutting the entire building and unveiling what had been covered up over the renovations in 1964. This building was originally the Shushan Airport. It was the terminal on the Shushan Airport, built in 1933, and it's one of the first Art Deco airports in the United States. It's a remarkable restoration and a remarkable piece of history. There are approximately five restored Art Deco terminals in the United States, and there are several others out there that are just dying and in decay. Uh, this one in particular happens to be one of the oldest because of its date that it was completed, 1933. Uh, most of the others, for instance, LaGuardia was 1935, Washington National was 1940, Houston Hobby was 1940. So this is one of the earlier first echelon of Art Deco airports, an incredible model that the others followed. Milestones are simply that it was one of the first, and the other real milestone is that Amelia Earhart, during her round-the-world trip, stopped here. Uh, she went from Oakland to Tucson to New Orleans. She spent the night right up there in the second floor hotel suite and then she went on to Miami which is where she announced her trip. Her mechanic, her personal mechanic, his name was Bo McNeely and he was from Patterson, Louisiana and he also worked here. So that's a very significant thing in you know national aviation history. Uh, untold numbers of well-known aviators from Jimmy Doolittle, Jimmy Waddell, uh, so on and so forth have come here and operated, uh, done flight operations here you know, with their aircraft. There's been air shows here, uh, all types of things. The list is really endless. We're here to celebrate an incredible milestone in the redevelopment of the city. We're here to celebrate a gorgeous building. A lot of time and effort and talent and dedication has been invested and we're here to show the public some memories from their past. After Katrina there was a mindset of, and even before Katrina, of things we cannot do, the things we cannot accomplish. And I'm, I'm pleased to say that this is a perfect example of what can be, right? It's a, it's a beautiful redevelopment. It shows us not only what we had before Katrina, but what's possible. It's been a real journey for us because we, uh, we fought over the years to reopen this facility, and it wasn't easy. And uh, we recognized early on that this could be an economic growth pole or a catalyst for New Orleans East, for Gentilly, for the lakefront, for that part of New Orleans which has been very slow to come back from the hurricane. And that's why we did what we did to, to fight, push on. There was a movement afoot to not open the airport, uh, to just shutter the terminal, but we didn't want to have that happen, okay? And uh, so we kept fighting. We had good partners with the federal government, uh, with FEMA, with the FAA, and partners in local government as well all our great elected officials, they all made this happen. And a great staff at this airport and this facility to help our board. It's actually a steel structure with a clay tile infill, a beautiful Portland cement with a marble aggregate as the exterior finish. Well, what's really impressive about this building is the interior. It's uh, got five types of Spanish marble, beautiful inlaid terrazzo, ornate aluminum transoms and railings, it's got beautiful plaster work, painted ceilings. Uh, it, it, it's just a stunning art example of Art Deco. And as, as you may know, there's not a whole lot of Art Deco examples in the South, not near as much as there is in New York. The Chrysler Building, some of the prime examples up there. But it's really nice to have a beautiful Art Deco building like this restored in the South because there are not that many of them. I think it's beautiful. It's an amazing feat to have this building back uh, in commerce, uh, particularly for uh, hosting events like weddings and holiday parties and meetings. I think it's going to be a great addition to the lakefront uh, area uh, to have a venue like this available for those types of events. And we understand there's a restaurant inside. Yeah, absolutely. It's beautiful. Um, I am very excited that the flights that come in every day will have a, a place to get a little uh, something to eat and some coffee. And I think it's a nice, um, a nice space, really. FEMA's worked um, with the board to um, address the disaster damages, but also worked with the board to help to fulfill the vision that they had of restoring the facility. And it's that vision 
and their interest in trying to bring back the original character and history of the facility that FEMA has worked very closely with them. It's a wonderful opportunity to see something that is a piece of history and a piece of the treasure in New Orleans come back. But a lot of it is the vision of the board and their um, thought process of this is a better investment than just trying to restore it back to the way it was. It's going to be used as a, a synergy hub for a, the aviation of this airport for the greater New Orleans area. Four, three, two, one. Touchdown, Saints! Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Please join us inside this most beautiful facility. I was here when it was built. Uh, when it was opened in 1933, yes, I was here. I, I came here on a city bus. How old were you? Twelve. What do you think as you take a look at the building now? I think it's beautiful. It's really polished. What's your reaction when you saw the final product? Really awe, because you, these artisans don't exist anymore. And to find people to renovate, reconstruct, and refurbish this, I thought was almost an impossibility. But it was, it was able to be done. And now you see the type of artisanship that was available in the 30s. To tell you the truth, I'm waiting for somebody to pinch me. Because I learned to fly out here back in the early 80s when the building was back in the pillbox stage. And always dreaming about it. When my father would tell me about it, what it looked like, what it looked like originally, it's just remarkable. It's, it's something everyone should see. The other thing I like to note is when you go to look at the state capitol building in Baton Rouge, this building, I call it the long forgotten sibling. They're near identical when you look at the lobbies. President Kennedy said that victory has a thousand fathers and defeat is always an or orphan. Today, this is a victory. This is a victory. And we don't have a thousand fathers and mothers, but we do have a lot of people, a lot of men and women that have helped us along the way. So if anything is remembered about that, at all levels of government and in the private sector, I'd like it to be that we had a lot of heroes and fellow people who were victorious, who were men and women who helped us along the way in, 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 in the effort to restore this facility. I'm excited. I can't stop smiling. I've run into people and spoken to people over the last week, and every time I tell them about the redevelopment of the terminal, a smile comes to their face every time because they're reliving memories and they remember a night they spent here many years ago or an afternoon they enjoyed with their family when they were a kid, so it's, it's excitement. It's going to be tremendous. This terminal has been closed for eight years and I, I believe that it will serve the same purpose it did back in the 1930s in the golden age of aviation. It was the economic uh, hub for the whole region and I think we're, we're returning to that. Your reaction as you take a look at the finished product? Um, I don't have words. Very, it's not often I don't have words but it is just magnificent and it represents so many good things for this for the people of this city. The airport is so incredibly important to the convention and tourism business, business in New Orleans. Thousands of aircraft come in here yearly for the conventions and for the special sports events that are sponsored here in New Orleans. Well, about 20 million dollars has inv been invested in the building. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. We have, re we have office space that's being leased. We have a restaurant, we have the Walnut Room, of course, so the building's going to be available for rent for special events, private parties, and then we also have tenants who will use the building on a day-to-day -day basis for their office. If people have questions like more information, what should they do? They should contact Louis Capo, who is the executive director of the Non-Flood Authority.